I just signed up for a full Ironman with no prior experience to triathlons, and this is how I'm able to maintain 15 to 20 plus hours training per week. For this, I'm including swimming, biking, and working out at the gym, as I currently have a stress fracture on my foot from my marathon that I ran, so I'm letting that heal right now. But once I do start to get back into running, I'm assuming I'm gonna be replacing some of my gym days with runs, and I'm gonna be at, ending up doing more hours. So this is currently just for biking, swimming, and working out at the gym. So let's dive in, and this is how I'm able to do that. This is probably one of the most crucial and main ones that has been able to help me keep going and train and that's stretching. And it all started probably back when I was in college. I was sitting in class one time and it just hurt to sit. It, it wasn't just one time, it was just always sitting in class. I could barely sit for longer than 30 minutes. So after a while I realized, all right, you know what? I'm just gonna start stretching. And basically what I started doing was stretching every single morning, my back and my lower ass and pretty much everything was hurting and it, I think it's some of the workouts that I did caused the issues for pain, but it basically got me into it. And this was probably over five years ago. And I just started stretching every morning and I haven't stopped since. And that's something that I still do to this date where every single morning I wake up and first thing I do, I get my stretches in. I stretch for about 20 to 30 minutes every day. And I could probably do more because of how crucial and vital it is. And maybe like post-workout or even before bed, I could stretch then. But stretching has been one of the biggest things and played a huge role with recovery and not hurting my body because I just know how often my body used to hurt and how little it does now. And it's played a huge role over the years in maintaining my training, whether that's in the gym, running, biking, swimming, and it's just played a huge role. So I just focus a lot on what I need help with, and maybe there are some other ones that I could incorporate, and that's what I've done sometimes where I looked up other stretches for what would be good for, for biking, what would be good for swimming, what would be good for running, and I just incorp try to incorporate those, maybe not in the morning one because I got that into like a little routine, but maybe post run or before bed, say oh, the other night I was a little tight on my, my quads or tired, whatever it was, I looked up some good biking stretches and then I decided to do those before I went to bed. So stretching has been a huge aspect for me in maintaining and not hurting as much. And if you don't stretch, I, I don't know what you're doing. You should definitely be stretching. This one might be the area that I have the most to improve on, but the consistency's there and that's sleep. I go to sleep and wake up at the exact same time every single day, no matter if it's a weekday, a weekend, a holiday, it doesn't really matter. I go to bed at the exact same time. There might be a slight variance, maybe 30 to 60 minutes, but for the most part, I'm going to bed the exact same time and waking up at the exact same time. And this also means that I'm getting the same number of hours of sleep every single night, which is typically seven to eight hours, depending on what time I wake up and getting into what time I actually wake up. I don't set an alarm. I just let my body wake itself up. So that's another thing that I think is beneficial for me where I'm not having an alarm ruin my sleep when I'm maybe in a deep sleep or a REM sleep. I, I don't know if I actually get there. That's another point that I'll get into later, but I don't have an alarm that wakes me up. So I just let my body naturally wake up and getting into my deep sleep and REM sleep. That's the part that I think I could improve on because I think I wake up quite a few times more than I probably should throughout the night. And then I usually always wake up at least once to go to the bathroom and that kind of sucks. I don't know what happens. It kind of started when I was training for a marathon and I started consuming a lot more water, a lot more food. So I'm not sure if it's a combination of the both, but I do end up waking up once minimum, usually at least once for to go to the bathroom. And then I'm usually tossing and turning throughout the night. So that's probably the area that I can improve on. So sleep is extremely important and I've prioritized that for a while. I would like to get maybe eight hours because I find I always have bags under my eyes if I don't get enough hours of sleep. And I'm not too big of a fan of getting around seven hours. So I would like to sleep longer, but it's just my body naturally waking up. And whenever I try to sleep in, I'll maybe get like an extra 30 minutes and that's as long as my body will let me sleep in. But sleep is the second one on how I'm able to maintain training. This one I've done for so long that I don't think I actually realize the impact that it actually has on me and my say recovery is diet and nutrition where I've 
eaten really clean for so long, I might have a few unhealthy snacks here and there, but for the most part, I was eating really clean for probably the better part of five, close to 10 years, but now I've even dialed it in even more where I barely eat any junk food. Like I used to eat chips when I was eating relatively clean and now I don't eat any chips. I try to cut out any sweets and man, I have a sweet tooth, so that's really hard. But diet and nutrition, I've taken really seriously. I currently weigh my food. Everything that I eat, I weigh it. I track it in MyFitnessPal. If you don't have that, it's a great app, free to use. And it tracks all your macros. And that's one thing that I try to look for is hitting my protein goal, which is basically just my body weight. So I currently weigh about 165 to 170. So I just make sure that I get that much protein and grams in my day. And then the rest I kind of falls into place. A couple other things that I do look at, I try to make sure that I get a good amount of fiber in. And then also I try to make sure that my sugars are really low, which is tough because I like fruits, but that's more natural. So that's another thing that I do like to have with my food is I like to have whole and natural foods. And that's what I started doing a while ago where I would, sorry, where I would stop eating or taking supplements and I tried to get all my nutrients and all my nutritional value from my foods that I was eating. So I was trying to eat more whole and natural foods and that's what I started doing and I felt really good doing that and that's what I continue to do now. And I think just doing all those things, it just adds up over time. Yeah, it's just weighing my food every single day, inputting it into my fitness pal, making sure that I'm hitting my calorie goal and knowing exactly how many calories that I need to hit within the day, hitting my protein goal, staying low on sugars, hitting fiber, and then basically all the micronutrients will follow as long as I'm staying to eat clean. Because when you look at it, you only get a certain number of calories each day, and that's basically your fuel. That's how you recover. That's how your body replenishes itself. So you gotta make sure that you're giving your body and mind as well proper nutrition, proper foods, and they say you are what you eat, so that's why I try and eat a lot of whole and natural foods. I try and eat as clean as possible and I feel really good and I, I don't think I realize just how good I actually feel because it's been so long that I've eaten bad. So diet and nutrition is huge for recovery and making sure that you're able to maintain and hit all your goals. So if you aren't tracking your foods, I think you could do that. It's not necessary but it does help you make sure that you are hitting your goals because you might think you're getting more calories than you actually are, are or aren't. And for me, I think when I was younger, I was always really skinny. I was like, man, I eat so much. But I think once I started tracking my foods, I was like, okay, I don't eat nearly as much as I thought. And then especially trying to hit your protein goals and maybe you want to stay low on sugars. If you don't track it, it's tough for you to actually measure it. So that's one thing that I would say if you are struggling, and recovery. I think diet and nutrition is often overlooked. So that's one thing that I do think helps me significantly. This one I don't do much of, but I think it has a big impact on my training and recovery. But like I was saying in the diet and nutrition section, I try to get everything as naturally as possible. And this is supplementation. I currently only take creatine and element T. And I think they both have really good impact on my training and recovery, but I think Element T has a much bigger and significant impact on actually being able to recover properly. And with creatine, I think it's a little bit harder to actually distinguish exactly how much it's affecting me and the muscle growth and recovery. But these are the currently only two things that I do take for supplements. I was previously taking collagen and a pre-workout. The pre-workout was mainly just for my incentive to get me to the gym, get me fired up a little bit. And it was a little reward, I guess you could call it. And if you do also want to include coffee, caffeine in it. So I do take or drink caffeine a little bit. I probably drink about maybe five to 10 cups per week. So maybe not a lot in some people's eyes, but maybe a lot in some people's eyes at the same time. So that's what I used to do, but I don't do that anymore. I just ran out of that. I'm not gonna be going back on that unless I start losing motivation to wake up and get to the gym and do all that. But I currently will be stopping that and I'll just be drinking coffee. 
And then collagen, I just ended up cutting that out. So I'm going to see how that affects if my joints or my muscles aren't recovering properly. I might factor that back in. Creatine was the first one that I was ending up taking. That was mainly because I was working out and I know that there's a lot of good benefits with it. And from what I've heard, there's a lot of good studies and for supplementation, creatine is like one of the main ones that actually has proven benefits to actually taking. It helps maintain a continuous energy supply to your muscles during intense workout sessions. And in addition to providing more energy and muscle growth, it helps speed up muscle recovery. So that's another reason that I do take creatine. And then for element T, it has salt and electrolytes in it, which I think are crucial to rehydrating and staying hydrated because if you just drink water, it's going to go right through you. Whereas if you have salt and electrolytes, it's going to be able to maintain it. So you are able to better refuel and replenish your body and your muscles and make sure that you aren't cramping up, getting headaches or even preventing muscle fatigue, especially when you're working out a lot, you're going to lose a lot of sweat, which has a lot of salt in it. So you want to make sure that you're continually getting more salt in you and from the recommendations from I think World Health Organizations, they say a lot less than what you should actually be doing, especially if you are endurance training or you work out a lot, you should be taking in a lot more salt because you're sweating out a lot more salt. So you gotta make sure that you're replenishing all that. So next one up on our list here is time management. And obviously you gotta have time management if you're squeezing in 15, 20 plus hours of workouts per week. And what I like to do as you can kind of tell here is I like to get my workouts in early in the morning because then that leaves no room for excuses or just other stuff coming up. And then it's knocking it out early in the morning. And that's just something I've really come to like where once I get this done, it's, so, it's usually my favorite part of the day where I get to go work out right now. Swimming obviously isn't a big fan of, but running, working out, biking I do really enjoy so being able to start my day off with something that I enjoy knocking it out early in the morning feeling accomplished it's just really good to get that in early in the morning and then you don't really have to do as much time management later on in the day if you don't get it done early in the morning however if I don't get my workout done in the morning say I can't go for a bike ride at five or six o'clock in the morning then I have to do some reverse engineering later on in the day where I have to look at my meetings, look at my schedule, look at what I got going on and say I'm going for a two hour bike ride, then I'd go backwards from there. So say I got a meeting at three o'clock. So can I fit that two hour bike ride in there to be able to shower afterwards and eat? And then I got to do some reverse engineering there and time management comes into play really big there and making sure that I'm able to get my bike ride in because I don't like to, I go to bed pretty early because I got to get up early. so. It, I don't like to work out pretty late in the day. So that's why I like to get it done first thing in the morning. So just making sure that I have good time management and prioritization. And then that brings me into my next one. This last one is probably the most basic and the one that everyone probably knows they should do, but it turns out to be the hardest because you got to stay disciplined and have that consistency. For me, I wouldn't say this is extremely hard to do just because it's become some of my non-negotiables that I have to get my bike in. I have to get my swim in, but there are some days when say swimming, for example, I'm not a big fan of swimming. I just have to, it's a struggle to get myself to the gym to go and swim. So basically what it is, is maybe it's laying out my swimming suit and my towel and making sure that I'm ready and just getting myself there because once I'm there, there's no excuse at that point. So it's just making sure that I can get myself there with discipline and consistency. It somewhat ties into time management as well, because I got to say no to a lot of things. I got to go to bed early. I got to wake up early. And then it's just having really good time management skills along with the discipline to go to bed early, to wake up early, to get to the gym and get the swim in or get the bike in. And it's just having that discipline and consistency. And for me, I feel like staying self-motivated and staying disciplined has been something that I'm fairly good at, which, so this makes this section a little bit easier for me. And some of the other sections might be a little bit harder, but for discipline and consistency, you aren't going to be able to get there because if I miss a day or miss two days, then it starts to pile on. And then I'm not going to be able to get to my target goals of say 15 or 20. I don't really have a target goals of how many hours I want to work out, but 
it makes it tough to be able to get to that point if I end up missing a day or two. So one thing that I think really helps for me in getting all this stuff done is just making it non-negotiable where this is something that I have to do every single day. It doesn't matter what happens. And that's why I like to get it in early in the morning because then there's nothing else that's going to be able to come up and have an excuse as to why I can't get it done. Whereas if I were to push it off to say later in the day and stuff, stuff comes up, then it's like, okay, now I got to do this stuff and I can't do that. So that's why I like to get it done early and have that discipline and consistency. So that's some of the main factors that I actually believe help me be able to train 15 to 20 plus hours per week. And I think it's also important to note that before I was actually starting to train for an Ironman, I was training in the gym seven days a week. So that was something that I was just already doing. And then especially when I was training for my marathon, I was probably training maybe 10 to maybe 10 ish hours per week just for that marathon. So it's not something that I just came out of nowhere and decided to go from zero to 15 or 20 or 25 hours. It was already at say 10 to maybe 15. I was probably somewhere between seven and 15 hours per week. So it was already something that I already had built up over a lot of time. And now I'm just adding on to that. And I understand that rest and recovery is extremely important. And some people might say that you need to give your body more time to recover. Or you shouldn't be training that much. But I think for what I want to achieve, I, want, I need to push myself and I need to be able to get to those marks that I want to be at. And I understand that rest and recovery is going to be crucial in that part. But I think just pushing my body to be able to get to that point where this becomes normal for it and then it starts to adapt to it. I think that's gonna be huge and that's gonna help me out a lot. So this is some of the contributing factors that's allowing me to be able to train 15 to 20 plus hours per week and outside of Ironman training, I'm having to say no to other outside stuff just so I'm able to prioritize Ironman training and getting all my workouts in, but that's all part of the process. And I'm just willing to do that because this is one of my main priorities right now. And that's what I wanna go out and achieve. So these are some of the contributing factors on how I'm able to train 15 to 20 plus hours per week. And once I get my foot back and healed, I'll be running more and I should be up around 20 to 25 hours. We'll see how my body handles it and we'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching.